hey, what if you could be in the boardroom where we sit down and we plan out how we're going to grow our eight-figure company month in and month out? If you've ever wondered how traffic and funnels grew so quickly, there are strategies, there are formulas that you can model in your business that our clients are modeling to scale to the moon and back. This is an amazing program. It's called Insider's Access Monthly. And we've put together a couple words on a page that you can actually go and check out this offer, trafficandfunnels.com slash IAM. You will not be sorry, I promise you. Let me know what you think. You're listening to The Traffic and Funnel Show. 10 points. We don't have anything else to do, so I'm gonna give you training. Cool? Cool. 10 points on optimization consistency is the goal right you've seen the training on the dominican hopefully seen all of the behavioral optimization tra- uh, training it's all about consistency he who is the most consistent with the right behaviors for the longest amount of time is going to win make sense yep 100%. so everything in my life is optimized around making me consistent and every six months or so i'll change something One, number one, clothes and trinkets. What does this mean? This sounds crazy, but what you wear actually makes a pretty big difference in your identity, how you feel. Isn't that right, Anthony? 100%. Yep. My wife was texting me making fun because she was in Minneapolis and she said, I found those shirts you like at H&M and I bought 12 of them. (laughs) And I'll just wear them over and over. It's, uh, It's just, it's, I'm trying to be as consistent as possible and what I am surrounded by, in, including trinkets. You go into my office and uh, Todd Herman calls them totems. I call them trinkets. They're things that remind you who you are at your best so that when you feel at your worst, you have a, a latching on point. Make sense? Yep. Mm-hmm. My biggest trinket is Tommy. So I just <laughs> take him around everywhere with me. Number two, routines. So I'm in Tampa and uh, it's, I don't love, yeah, it's just, it's a different city for me. I'm used to Nashville and I'm um, up in the morning and I'm walking to Starbucks. Why am I going to Starbucks? That's what you do. It makes me feel like who I am. It's my routine. I have the same thing I do in the morning. I have the same thing I do at night. If something in your life changes, like you have a baby or something crazy, uh, the morning Kate was born after not sleeping, I humbly requested 30 minutes to go get Starbucks. Just trying to keep as consistent as possible. What's an example of a routine that you have, Heather? Um, Every night before I go to bed, I read. There you go. Like dirty, trashy novel. (laughs) Yeah, just like Seventeen magazine, you know? (laughs) I love it. She just gets the the bottom gutter of novel. (laughs) Question so far? No, it's good. Food. Number three is food. Your food and your routine can mix together. Uh, But this is why typically I'm eating the same things as much as I can. And like you'll see this in people like Brenda Burchard, uh, even Tony. When they go to a new city, they take food with them. They've got the same types of inputs that they're using nutritionally to keep them strong clothes routines food number four and number five or uh, yeah four or five sleep and exercise sleep is number four exercise number five so number three four and five are all biology three four and five biology this is probably the most important to keep consistent we're sitting down with eating dinner and he has worked with uh, uh, super bowl winners uh, people who filled stadiums with 100,000 people for concerts. He's worked with the peak of the peak. He says the first thing that he, has, that he does when he gets a new client is there's something in their life they don't like, and they think it's this big, complicated problem, and he gives them a notebook, and he says, track your sleep or you're fired. And he fixes their sleep. That's the first thing he fixes. Pretty big deal. Ready to keep going? Yeah. Yes. Helpful or no? Yeah, super helpful. Inputs. Yeah. Inputs. Mental inputs, it's number six. How many of you have woken up in the morning and you just don't feel excited or inspired? Every morning. <laughs> Peyton, every single morning. <laughs> and then you may, uh, you may read a book or you may read you know, a post or get in the winch channel and then all of a sudden you start feeling inspired. Yeah. How many of you have uh, gone too long without eating and your body starts turning on you? Yeah. Yes. And then you start eating and you feel like I am going to take over the world. The same exact phenomenon happens with your energy circuits and the way you are mentally calibrated. So 
when you are feeling uninspired and you have access to a phone that has a podcast app on it, sometimes the best thing you can do is throw on a podcast that is going to inspire you, light you up. Human beings are focus-oriented, energetic beings. Our energy comes from what we pay attention to, which is why inputs is so important. Yeah. It's also why I listen to the same thing, the same thing, like clockwork. I'm consistent in my input with specifically with Jim Run. Ready to keep going? Yeah. Seven is connection. Connection. What does that mean? It's like journaling, meditating. Things that are going to make you feel connected and grounded. We've talked a lot about this with journaling. Um, meditating is a great habit to build because it makes your brain really <laughs> strong. But when you feel out of control, a lot of times it's a connection issue because you have all of these sensory inputs, things are happening around you, but you're not actually sure where you are in the middle of the storm. That's all a connection issue. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many of you work on this every day? What? Journal every day. Yes. Yeah, that would be connection. Cool. How many of you work on this every day? Cool. Love the delay. I'm reading everybody's mental calibration about how long it takes you to raise your hand, by the way. Number eight, environment and location. Environment and location. Bryce, you are at a disadvantage, my friends. Nick, you are at a disadvantage. Ben, bit of a disadvantage. You have to manufacture your own environmental health. You get in a room with you know, me in Nashville or Chris in Charlotte, and all of a sudden your environment is being manufactured for you. Try this when you're in Nashville. Ben, Nick, Heiser, try to walk into the offices here and not get excited. I want to see how, I want to see how I'm well, I want to see how well you can do that. <laughs> Especially when Heather has the music or when Sarah has the music playing. This is why I'm so obsessed with the music. It's not because I care about music. It's just environmental design. <laughs> Number eight, any questions? No. This is why we re relocate people. It's not a control thing. It's like, you're disadvantaged. Like there's a, there's a, it's, it's like, it's like playing golf with a handicap when you get into an environment that's designed for you. It's just easier. Make sense? Yep. yep. Number nine is people, people picture the alcoholic who decides they no longer want to be an alcoholic anymore, but every day they go to the same bar and they just rely on discipline. What would you say about that person? <laughs> They're doomed. Doomed. Picture the person who decides, I'm going to up-level my life. I'm going to grow. I'm going to earn more money, and I'm going to learn. And they stay with the same relationships that they had when they were, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You cannot rely on discipline. Bryce, you make a decision that you want to grow. You make a decision yes. you want to up-level. You, you want to become somebody that you previously were not. You are going to have yes. to actually design your relationships to reinforce that vision. I'm not saying that you just say, hey, deuces, we've been friends for 20 years, but I don't care about you anymore. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's going to be a process of you. Sometimes you're going to have to actually surround yourself with a group of people that are doing what you want to do. Don't burn relationships, replace them. That's a pretty good piece of advice. Number 10 is just miscellaneous. Um, I actually put number 10 in there for Chris because... Chris has all these things that don't necessarily fit into my checklist. For example, he has an espresso machine, but it's not about the coffee and it's not about the espresso machine. It's actually about him making the espresso. It's like things that are miscellaneous that you love to do. You need to be thinking about what are the things that make you feel alive and pay attention to them and stack them on top of each other. Another big tip, pay attention to the things that make you feel obligated, like you owe something to somebody and run away from them. Salespeople, we cannot operate out of obligation. We cannot operate simply because we feel like we have to do something. You need to have a compelling vision that inspires you. Use, this, use these bullet points to stack up your environment so you're healthy. Questions? No. Nope. Super good. Nope. Everybody can hit their numbers this week. Come on, step up. All right, you guys are awesome. Set the goals. See ya. Thanks for listening. For more from Chris and Taylor, visit trafficandfunnels.com and get a free gift just for being a subscriber. That's trafficandfunnels.com.